Today, we are going to finish looking at the evolution of LEGO Ninjago minifigures. In part one, we looked at seasons one through eight, so now let's finish with seasons nine to 18. Let's go. So for season nine, we got an interesting selection of minifigures because for the main four ninja, their suits were just tattered versions of their Sons of Garmadon suits. Like how Kai and Cole have a ripped sleeve with one arm exposed each and how they all have new details added on top of their suits from the previous season. They also have black on the bottom half of their mask now. Interestingly though, Nia and Lloyd, the two ninja who stayed in Ninjago that season, got brand new suits that had the little Wu Crew symbol on them. The shoulder pad distribution is also weird this season, because Kai has the Skybound shoulder pads like the previous season, Jay has the classic shoulder pads and Zayn uses the quiver piece again, and the rest don't have any shoulder armour, so not very consistent. And we also got Teenage Wu this season, as well as a heap of new bad guys. Though some of the best hunted figures are the Dragonflyer outfits for the main four ninja plus Wu. Kai, J, Cole and Zane all share the same leg printing, but have these awesome looking flying suits, and Wu gets the best out of them all, being gold and white. So hunted was pretty unique in how it handled the ninja's suits. Then there was Ninjago Legacy after that, where we got redesigned versions of the 2011 to 2013 ninja, including a new Samurai X Nia. And the Legacy Ninja suits are very good. You can see they all have golden dragon printing, reminiscent of the DX suits, but they also look kind of ambiguous as to what specific suits these are meant to represent, because they are used in the Legacy Pilot Season 1 and 2 sets. And then there's the Legacy 2 versions of the Ninja, that are clearly based mostly off of the tournament suits, but also off the rebooted suits, seeing as they were in the Legacy sets of Season 3 and 4. Weirdly though, Zayn doesn't get one even though he definitely was in Season 3, but never had a sleeveless suit in the original Season 4. We also got another version of Samurai X for some reason. And then in 2021, we got what I'm going to dub the Legacy 3 suits, but only for Zayn in one set based off Season 5. And since he didn't get a Legacy 2 suit, this is essentially Zayn's Legacy 2 suit. Though I imagine if Legacy had have continued, all of the ninja would have gotten suits like this representing their Season 5 and 6 appearances. There were also the epic battle suits for the classic 4 ninja, which offered a different and interesting style of suits that look a lot more muted and realistic than most of the ninja's other outfits. And I can't overlook their 10th anniversary minifigures, which all feature the same legs but have unique torsos, shoulder pads and helmets representing different seasons. And comparing these 10th anniversary figures to the pilot figures, you can see just how radically Ninjago changed in a decade. Then there was Season 11, and the ninja's suits here used the same template from Legacy but with new colours. Cole incorporated orange for the first time, which looked great, and he kept up the sleeveless appearance from Seasons 8 and 9. Lloyd got some brown mixed into him, and weirdly wore no gloves in the season, which has never been explained why to this day. Nia was primarily gunmetal grey with some Azua thrown in there, and Zayn also incorporated some light blue shades, including his hands, which was consistent with his Ice Emperor appearance. Jay and Kai's suits are very similar to their legacy appearances, but now they and all the others have symbols printed on their headbands. We also got a new caped version of Wu, who also got an updated face print with sideburns. And there were also the Forbidden Spin Jitsu suits, which are identical to their primary suits but use a new dual molded hood and flame piece. Sadly though, they lack shoulder pads. And speaking of which, the shoulder pads were recolors of the legacy pieces this season. And lastly, suit wise, there were the Spinjitsu Slam robes for Lloyd, Kai, Zane, and Jay, which looked like their standard Forbidden Spinjitsu suits, but now have this energy printing on their torsos and faces and have gold and silver colors instead. The suits were pretty standard looking this season, but that was good because these would be used as the base suits throughout the next five seasons of the show. Then, starting with season 12, we entered the era of specialized hood pieces in Ninjago because from seasons 12 to 16, we would get unique hood and shoulder pad designs every season, as opposed to the usual one suit template lasting two seasons and just switching colors. The Prime Empire suits here introduce a new style of mask and shoulder pads that have a very angular and futuristic design, which makes sense because this season is set in a cyberpunk-esque video game. I think this was the first time all the ninja suits incorporated white into them, and they look really good. Sadly though, Zayn doesn't get one, even though there was a design for it leaked in a magazine. However, he did eventually get a Detective Zane suit, which was of course from Season 12, so that kind of makes up for it. And we also got their Avatar suits this season. Cole, Nia, and Zane's all came in the gamer market, and Zane's is an absolute standout, being his pink suit from Season 1. And Lloyd, Kai, and Jay's came in the arcade pod sets, and all have very cool, unique designs. I really like Superstar Rock and Jay in particular. And then we have Season 13, where we got the hero outfits and the contrast from last season is extraordinary. We went from futuristic to medieval, with the ninja now having knight-like armor and shields. They all feature gold or silver with their primary color. 
and they all have new torso prints, but Kai, Jay and Zayn all reuse their season 11 legs, and Lloyd, Cole and Nia get new legs. It is kind of weird that they didn't give them new legs printing here, but there really is only so many different designs you can give them. I can't even tell most of the later ninja suits legs apart. The hero suits have never really been my favourite. I mean, they're okay, but I'm not a big fan of the asymmetrical armour or the mask shape. And I almost forgot the Spinjitzu Burst suits for Cole, Kai and Lloyd, which used the basic legacy pieces all recoloured to represent the ninja Spinjitzu Burst forms, which look cool, but of course we need ones for Zayn, Nia and Jay. And then there were the island suits in 2021, which introduced the awesome headband and hair pieces for Lloyd, Kai and Jay, whilst Cole reuses his hair from a few Ninjago movie sets that was also used on Team Wu. Zayn and Nia meanwhile get their standard hair pieces, however Nia would receive a hair slash headband combo piece later in 2021, so feel free to put that on there like I have done here. The printing on these suits feels very high quality, and it seems like there's a lot more detail packed in compared to the previous season. I believe this is also the first year that we got Zayn with sleeveless silver arms, which is cool. Overall, the island suits feel like a very good matching team, just a shame that Zayn never got a headband. And then there were their Seabound suits, which introduced a brand new scuba mask piece as well as an oxygen tank sword holder piece that goes around the neck and the legs. And if you were lucky enough to get the Hydro Bounty, you could collect all of these ninja in one set. I'm not really a huge fan of these suits specialised pieces, because I don't like suits where the shoulder armour forms part of the mask. I'm looking at you, Dragons Rising. Also, the sword holder on the back face is the opposite way to literally every other one-way shoulder pad piece. Not to mention the fact that the sword literally stabs through their oxygen tanks, undoubtedly depriving the ninja of oxygen. Also, Cole and Kai never went underwater in this season, so these figures are non-canon. There is really a whole lot of issues with the Seabound suits, but as usual, the printing was really very good on all of them. And we also got NRG near this season, and if you count Golden Lloyd as Lloyd's NRG form, that means we finally were able to complete the NRG ninja suits after 9 years. After this was Ninjago Core, which brought us some new ninja suits that are very, very colourful, with each ninja featuring two different colours. These suits are very bright and vibrant and were designed to appeal to a slightly younger audience than usual, and I think they do a good job of looking modern, colourful, and also relatively simple. And for Ninjago Crystallized in 2022, we got three new suits. The first were the fugitive outfits that used the legacy pieces again, and I really like the look of all of these, as they all feature their main colour and a darker shade of said colour. And then there were the golden suits for the classic 4 ninja that were basically their fugitive suits with added gold highlights. And this was the last time this legacy hood piece was used on a suit. I think its very final use was in the Dragon's Rising Destiny's Bounty in June 2023, so I'm glad that this piece got to have a long run at 4.5 years of use. The final crystallized suit isn't even a suit, it's a form, that being the dragon form for each of the four main ninja, which brought us the token new mask and shoulder pad piece for crystallized. These are very cool looking and I love how they are translucent, kind of like how the NRG ninja should have looked. And I really think we should have gotten Dragon Fawn to Lloyd and Nia, but Nia in particular really got screwed over this season, only having one minifigure. And then we move on to Dragon's Rising Season 1, or Season 17 if we include past seasons, blah blah blah, you've heard it all before. The Dragon's Rising suits are an interesting look. They brought us a much more simple and clean design after having five seasons of progressively more out there designs for the ninja, which they seem to have done a few times before. Start out with a very basic suit and then escalate the detail and colours more and more over the next few seasons and then reset the basic again. So I think in that aspect, Dragon's Rising suits work well. But they suffer from a major flaw, that being the two-part hood and shoulder pad pieces. Two-part masks in LEGO are perfectly fine, the Ninjago movie hoods and Darth Vader did it very well, but the problem here is that you can't even turn the ninja's heads. Funnily enough, the movie ninja style of hoods are the only heads that you can actually turn all the way around without hitting something, but with these suits, even if you take off the top part, their heads are locked forward, otherwise you can't fit their hair on all of them, so that is a major issue. Also, the lack of mask printing makes them look a bit too plain. If there were multiple colours it wouldn't be too bad, but since the whole suit is basically one shade it looks very plain. Usually we would have some kind of printed symbol on the top. And we did actually get this hood piece printed that season, in the form of the Dragon's Binjutsu suits for Lloyd, Kai and Nia, which feature translucent arms and printed hoods that look very good. But overall, the first Dragon's Rising suits could have been a lot better. And that brings me to the current Ninjago season, Dragon's Rising Season 2, and so far we have had four different sets of suits for the ninja. The first being the mech pilot suits for all the main six, which look really cool and as the name implies are used by the ninja when piloting their mechs. 
The next are the climber suits, also used by All Main 6 Ninja, and they reuse the Season 1 hood pieces, but eliminate the need of printing on them due to the awesome dual molded shoulder pad pieces. They still suffer from the lack of ability to move their heads, but the shoulder pads look so much better than the Season 1 suits. And Ninja all have nice climber gear printed on them. And then we have the Source Tournament suits of almost every Ninja, which are very reminiscent of their Tournament of Elements suits and their Legacy 2 suits. Once again, the printing is great, and I like the look of all of them. The only thing is, I think Cole could have benefited from using his island headband. And we also got Rising Dragon Strike suits for Kai, Nia, and Aaron that are barely any different from their mech pilot suits except for the shoulder pads and gold on the mask pieces. We also got Sora, Aaron, Nia, and Kai's Dragons Rising Season 1 suits again, and a new evil suit for Jay, another mech pilot suit for Cole, and a master variant of Lloyd. So an absolute ton of minifigures this season. And that is how far Ninjago suits have come. In conclusion, it is crazy to see how much Ninjago has evolved since 2011 and how much change the minifigures have gone through, yet at the end of the day they are still the same characters we all know and love, and it will be interesting to see how much the theme continues to change in the years to come, because Ninjago is certainly not going anywhere anytime soon. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, click here to watch part 1 if you haven't seen it already, and leave a like if you enjoyed. That's been all for today folks, have a great day and see you next week.